Hey guys, it's B here. Uh, this is the Maw. This is my very own custom computer. Um, and I want to show you guys something. Uh, let me take this door off. Um, first off, I'm kind of sick, so please excuse any weird noises I make during the duration of this video. <laughs> um, but here is my computer. The whole full spark parts list is going to be in the description for you if you want to check it out. But the main things are we got a 4790K here and a 980Ti. Uh, now, <clears throat> this 4790K, um, I got a liquid cooler for, which is keeping it nice and nice and cool. Uh, under a very slight load, uh, it's hitting 30 degrees Celsius. It's normally at like 25, 27-ish, uh, under, uh, just idle. And at load, it doesn't ever really hit above 50, maybe 60, um, every once in a while. But the 980 Ti, this graphics card, is a very hot mother. Um... This thing idles at like 30 degrees, uh, which isn't bad at all. Um, but as soon as I start playing any game, after a little while, she will get super duper hot. So right now I'm running um, the um, Unengine Heaven benchmark. Uh, this guy has been running here for a while and we have got our uh, GPU running really hot. Uh, now the stock cooler on this thing is keeping it at 83 degrees, which is thermal throttling. Which basically means it's getting so hot that it is... Uh, underclocking it so it'll stay you know it won't overheat and this thing is right now so hot it like kind of hurts to touch uh, <laughs> and not to mention it is so loud so listen listen to this I'm gonna stop the fan real quick just so you can hear it yeah that's a very very loud fan I'm sorry but I just when, when you're when you're playing a game you don't really notice it um, but I want these temperatures to be a lot cooler so um, uh, I'm gonna leave all the little you know all the specs and stuff down at the in the description uh, but I have a very special surprise to show you guys oh let me just show you first um, during during this benchmark it's hitting about um, 60 70 frames average it says the average is 81 but that wasn't particularly the case in some places um, it's got a score of 2052, um, so we're gonna slap this brand new cooler on it, and then we'll see what's going on. Um, oh, also, real quick, uh, we are, it's, the clock is 1392, and the memory is running at 3505 megahertz. Um, so I'm not sure if that's actually gonna change right off the bat, but, um, as soon as we get this new cooler on there, those temperatures should fly down, go much, much lower, because it's hitting 83 degrees right now, thermal thr throttling. Um, once we get them, once once we get this new cooler on here, we can actually apply some overclocking too. So we will get some uh, better things going on for quite a while. So yeah, let's get let's head over there and check it out. All right, guys, here she is. So this is the EVGA 980 Ti hybrid cooler. Um, so since I'm running my stock cooler, I figured I needed a change. So let's see what's in here. So we obviously got the setup guide and stuff like that. Here is, um, this guy is the shroud, um, so this is basically what, uh, you're gonna see, uh, from the outside. So this cooler actually has, um, as you can see here, this is where the, um, the actual tubing is gonna go through. Uh, it's gonna have the water block on the actual GPU itself, the actual processing unit. And then it's going to have the blower style fan cool all the VRMs and the RAM and every other part of it um, to keep everything else nice and cool. That's why I bought this cooler as opposed to others. Um, so obviously we got um, the shroud here and then under here we got all our screws and junk. And here is the cooler itself. So it's got a pretty nice looking block I think. It's nice and simplistic. Um, you're never really going to see it, but I mean, if you ever decide to go full water, custom water cooling, uh, then you can um, completely uh, use this for something else, maybe another CPU block or whatever you want. Uh, that also does come with its own thermal paste, which I'll get to later. Um, and here is the radiator. It's just a normal, um, I think it's 120 rad, maybe 140, I can't quite tell. I feel like it's 120. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is just sticking this guy right on the front of my case. I'm not sure exactly how I can fit everything on there. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's the cooler right here.
So I figured I'd give you guys a tutorial so you know what you're getting into and because some things are left unsaid or pretty confusing in the instructions so here we go. Using a number one bit remove the five Phillips screws on the IO shield at the end of the card. Next flip the card over so it's facing down and remove the two more Phillips screws securing the IO shield to the card. If you have a backplate installed like I do you might need to remove the corner screw too. Returning to the I.O. shield, you'll have to use some needle nose pliers to start unscrewing the standoffs around the DVI port. You can use your hands to take care of the rest. The shroud is held along with 16 bolts, so you'll need a 2mm hex bit for the 8 chrome bolts and a 1.5mm for 8 others. This may require a lot of torque to loosen at first, but it's easy from there. Next I removed my EVGA backplate, but I found out later that I didn't actually need to because you only need to remove the four spring screws surrounding the GPU itself, and this backplate grants access to them. I also missed the two black bolts on the side of the shroud earlier, so I'll take them out now. From here you can start removing the shroud, starting with a big silver piece. Careful not to scratch this window if you want to use it later. Now pull straight up on this heatsink and it should come off pretty easily. We don't want to get thermal paste everywhere and because the cooler comes with some good stuff pre-applied, we'll clean off the heatsink and GPU itself with 90% isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Make sure you clean the GPU really well. If you're applying your own thermal paste, don't put it on like you do a CPU. You have to cover every bit of this GPU before you put the heatsink on. Using a triple zero Phillips bit, remove the four screws on the edges of the shroud. You can also take off the skinny silver piece of the shroud on the bottom of the card, but it's got some adhesive, so be careful not to bend it. Carefully remove the fan shroud. Be sure not to break the cable powering the LED. Remove two more triple zero screws and take off the last of the shroud. Then you can pull the LED header out with some vertical force. Now that everything's off, we can start to install the new cooler. Start by taking this small rubber piece off the new shroud. Find this hole, align it above the GPU, and then slide it on like this. Here's where things get tricky. Grab those spring screws we had earlier and get ready to attach the GPU block. Set it on slowly and be careful to hold it in place while you screw in the spring screws. It might help to have another hand on this step. Be sure to tighten the screws in a cross pattern so the thermal paste spreads evenly across the GPU. To power the pump we need to pass through the blower fan header. Route this cable under the tubing and then around the fan. Pull off the fan header like you did with the LED header, then plug in the pump splitter. Then plug in the wire and attach the blower fan to it. Then tuck these cables down so they don't make contact with the blower fan. Lead the long cable around the fan and across to this point where the shroud has a hole that the cable can pass through. Route the other cable outside of the card between the tubing because this one will power the radiator fan. Once you've got everything secured you can pop on the new shroud. Using the screws included with the cooler, fasten it to the card in the 8 spots around the sides. I messed up and used the original screws at first, which made it really hard to attach in some spots, but I replaced them later off camera, so just be sure you use the right screws. Now flip the card face down again and line up the IO shield. Screw in these two screws first to hold it in place. Then screw in the three smaller bolts below each display port connector then the two large ones, and then tighten the DVI standoffs with the pliers again. Then put on your backplate again. If you don't have one of these, I seriously recommend it. It makes your card look a lot better and helps with cooling a little bit. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. And now it's time to install it. Alright guys, she's in, minus the power cables, I'll do that in a second, but um, here she is, she looks pretty good, I mean, the gold is my least favorite part, um, but it kind of matches the VRMs on my motherboard, I was considering getting rid of that motherboard, but I mean, yeah, I'll keep it for now, maybe I'll spray paint that in a future thing, I mean, it's literally just like a little gold 
area right there and then on the bottom also but you won't even see that part um but yeah um the other thing is so i decided to match it up here because that's the way the tubing looked best um i couldn't fit it i could do it down here but it wouldn't really fit with the uh the way the power cables come out right there if you can see that um and right there i it just didn't look good with the tubing even if i wanted to move all those fans and stuff so i decided right here would be the best place uh, i had to just swap the fan around the other way um but okay so here's the thing right here i have two 120 mill millimeter fan or sorry 140 millimeter fans um and right here is a 120 mill millimeter radiator um so what i needed to do was mount that on there and i wanted to keep this fan because why not i mean i don't have any other place for it uh, unless I wanted to stick it on this top area, which I still need to get rid of that. Um, so what I ended up doing is these Venturi fans actually have a really cool feature where you can swap out um, the corner pieces, pop them out, and uh, put that kind of a thing there that makes it mount in a 120 millimeter uh, slot, which is really, really cool. I wish more fans would do something like that. Um, but basically, whoops, sorry, focus. It doesn't want to focus um, but basically I I mounted it there using the screws that were previously used for these because um, they go all the way through the entire fan and they barely barely poke out right there and I was able to mount the radiator on there like that um, I had it the other way actually I put it on with these 140 things and because they're completely rubber and really flexible and squishy uh, it fit actually pretty good except for the uh, where the screws hit was where this plastic was so it's kind of bumping the fan out and these had to be squished. I just didn't have it look, like how that looked. But, I mean, either way really works, but that's one of these use cases where that kind, that size of a fan actually matters. Uh, as well as down here, there's only a 120 millimeter mount down there, so I used them for those. But, I don't know, that's pretty sweet. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so now, uh, let's plug this guy in and give her a boot up. All right, she's all booted up. Uh, we got a video signal, which is great. My computer's just barely starting up, so we'll see uh, the NZXT cam software pop up in a second, tell us our temperatures. Um, you can kind of hear some bubbling going on. Don't worry about that. That's just the water, and the, there's a little bit of air stuck in there still. Um, as the GPU loop goes around, um, the air is going to get caught at the highest point, which is right up here at the top of the radiator. Um, which is perfectly fine. I mean, um, this has still has plenty of surface area to uh, dissipate the heat from those uh, from the fins uh, inside that radiator. Um, but as time goes on, more air will get trapped up in there, and uh, we'll get a lot less noise stuck in there. Okay, cool. So here we are, 22 degrees at idle. That's already a pretty big improvement from the 30 to 35 uh, idling the other one was at. Um, the old cooler, I should say. So how about we um, start up our Heaven benchmark and see what's see what goes on with that. All the exact same settings and everything. All right, it's just started up. I got it running full screen. We'll see our temperatures start to rise up as the test goes on. Um, so right now we're getting around the same frames per second, same um, uh, clock on the uh, graphics and memory. I'm not sure if the, uh, the numbers up there actually reflect what's the current clock of the graphics card. Maybe this will show us. Oh yeah, 1201 megahertz right there. And we'll see our temperatures only at 33 degrees right now. This thing would already be at about 60 degrees. Uh, climbing to 70 and about 80 um, by now on the previous cooler. And we're only at 34 right now, and it's been going on for about a minute. Wow, that's just crazy. Crazy increases. So I'm going to let this burn in, let the liquid uh, heat itself up, and I'll come back to you after a few minutes. Alright guys, so we've been running Heaven Benchmark for about 20 minutes now, letting all the liquid 
uh, heat up, letting everything level out, and we have a rock steady 37 degrees at full load. That is an insane improvement over what we had before. So I'm extremely happy. Now, uh, you might be interested to hear, um, let me get rid of this. So our previous score with the old cooler uh, was a 2052, and our new score is a 2149. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, that's not actually a very big increase from 2052. That's just 100 points. So here's the deal. Um, the graphics card was actually just clocked at the same speed. Um, the only thing is when it's hitting that top, um, the the 83 degrees when it's hitting that thermal throttling zone uh, it starts to stutter so you can see the minimum S FPS on there is 8 almost 9 and the minimum FPS on here was 24 so there's a lot less stuttering going on um, it's throttling a lot less and the um, it's basically running a lot smoother um, and on top of that the liquid is keeping it nice and cool which is going to extend the life of this card exponentially um, but the only the other thing the thing that makes this so much more significant this cooler is that now I can actually overclock it So basically what overclocking is is pushing it past its stock speeds um, And this card can actually overclock quite well, so um, As you see um, as you'll see I can overclock this thing a little later. I've never overclocked anything before but I I'm actually really excited to because now I can and I can do it without worrying about temperatures and things like that I've gotten gotten rid of the temperature wall got enough power to do the whole thing and I'm really excited so stay tuned uh, stay subscribed if you want to see this thing get overclocked um, also guys um, thank you so so much for watching this video uh, it's been a really great pleasure making this stuff to make you guys happy <laughs> it makes me happy for sure so if you want to see any more videos about PC updates or just how to do PC stuff, uh, please subscribe and give a like to this video. Leave a comment, any questions you have, um, and let me know. Because I do make videos quite often, not as much as I used to because I haven't been getting the, the right response. So let me know, you guys. Uh, do you like this GPU cooler? Should I paint it? Should I do something else to mod stuff to make it run a little better? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Let me know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been B. Have a good day.